Okay, so the integral of the cosine function to some power is sometimes not possible unless we reduce this power down to the first order. And this is especially true when we are integrating even powers of cosine. And probably the most common way of reducing the power is to use the half angle formula. So we can express cosine to the nth power as cosine squared to the m minus 2 power and apply the half angle formula to this. But unfortunately, what you'll find though is as m increases, we have to apply the half angle formula multiple times in order to reduce the nth power to the first order so that we end up with an expression that we can integrate. So the goal is to write cosine to the nth power as a series. So we have a constant times cosine to the nth multiple of x plus another constant by cosine to the m minus 2 multiple of x and so on and so forth. All right, but applying the half angle formula multiple times can be hard work. So is there a better way? And of course there is, thanks to complex numbers and De Moivre's formula. And who would have thought complex number theory would come in handy with a trigonometric integral that seems to have nothing to do with complex numbers? And this is why I love mathematics. All right, so if we consider the complex number z such that the magnitude or the modulus of z is equal to 1, then we can write z as being equal to cosine of theta plus i sine theta. So this is the polar form of the complex number. Now if we raise z to the nth power, then by Demoise's formula we can write cosine theta plus i sine theta to the nth power as equal to cosine of the nth multiple of the angle plus i times sine to the nth multiple of the angle. And as you can see, this is the most efficient power reducing formula because we've taken something to the nth power down to a single power in just one step. So let's label this as equation one. Let's label this as equation two. And once again, this is an application of de Moivre's theorem. For equation three, if I take the multiplicative inverse of the complex number, or z to the negative first power. De Moivre's theorem applies here as well. So we have cosine of negative theta plus i sine of negative theta. Now since cosine is an even function, cosine of negative theta equals cosine of theta. And the sine of negative theta is equal to negative of the sine of theta because it's an odd function. And for equation four, if we raise the inverse to the nth power, which equals 1 on z to the nth power, or z to the negative nth power, we have cosine of negative m theta plus i sine of negative m theta, which of course is equal to cosine m theta minus i sine m theta. Now, if we add equations 1 and 3, we have z plus 1 on z is equal to cos theta plus i sine theta plus cos theta minus i sine theta. These cancel to give us 2 by cos theta, which is a result that we probably should know already. It's simply 2 times the real component of z. Similarly, for equations 2 and 4, we have z to the nth power plus 1 on z to the nth power is equal to 2 by cos of m theta. These are two relationships that we'll need to take note of. In fact, let's call 
this one equation 5. With equation 5, we have 2 cos theta equals z plus 1 on z. Let's raise both sides to the sixth power. So the left hand side expands to 2 to the power of 6 by cos to the power of 6 theta. The right hand side will need to use a bit of binomial expansion here and if you don't know the coefficients already uh, let's quickly construct a Pascal triangle. When we square it we have 1, 2, 1. When we cube it we have the coefficients 1, 3, 3, 1. When we quadruple it we have 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. To the fifth power we have 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. And to the sixth power the coefficients are going to be 1, 6, 15, 20, 15, 6, 1. Okay, so binomially expanding this, the first term is raised to the power of 6 with coefficient 1 plus the co second coefficient 6 by the first term to the fifth power. So the power is reduced by 1 and then we times this by the uh, second term plus 15 by z to the fourth. So the power is reduced again. The power of the second term is increased by 1. And the pattern continues. Okay, so we have z to the 6 plus 6. These powers can cancel. So we have 6 by z to the fourth plus 15 by z to the second power plus 20 plus 15 by 1 on z squared plus 6 1 on z to the fourth plus 1 on z to the six. Okay now here's the fun bit. Let's group these. So we have z to the six plus 1 on z to the sixth plus 6 by z to the fourth plus 1 on z to the fourth plus 15 by z squared plus 1 on z squared plus 20. Now using this relationship we can say that z to the 6 plus 1 on z to the 6 is equal to 2 cos of 6 theta plus 6 by 2 cos of 4 theta plus 15 by 2 cos 2 theta plus 20 and this is all equal to 2 to the 6th by cos to the 6th and now dividing both sides by 2 to the 6th we have cos to the 6th is equal to 1 on 32 cos of 6 theta plus 3 sixteenth cos 4 theta plus 15 on 32 cos 2 theta plus 5 on 16. And can we now easily integrate the right hand side of the equation? Yes we can. So the right hand side integrates to 1 on 32 by sine 6 theta on 6 plus 3 on 16 by sine of theta 4 theta on 4 plus 15 on 32 of cos 2 theta divided by 2 plus 5 on 16 by theta and plus the integration constant c. So if we simplify further we get 1 on 192 sine 6 theta plus 3 on 64 sine of 4 theta plus 15 on 64 sine 2 theta 
sorry, this should be a sine, plus 5 on 16, theta, plus the integration constant, c. All right, so that's pretty cool. And you can use this method on both odd and even powers of cosine. It'll work equally well for both. And uh, give me a like if you feel that it sure beats the hell out of applying the half angle formula many times over. All right, that'll do it for this video. If you have any comments or queries, please uh, feel free to use the comments below. Best of luck with your studies, and I'll see you on the next video.